Hello and welcome to Frankly Speaking, the show where we dig deep into the insights of some of the leading policymakers in the Middle East and indeed the world. I'm Frank Kane. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Sirwan Barzani, General in the Kurdish Pashmurga Armed Forces and Chairman of the Korek Telecom Group based in Northern Iraq. Mr. Barzani, welcome to Frankly Speaking. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Barzani, you are a member of one of the leading families in the Iraqi Kurdistan region and a key figure in the economic and corporate infrastructure there. Tell us how you imagine the future of Iraqi Kurdistan. Uh, Iraqi Kurdistan aims to continue its uh, region leading the democracy and development and economic growth. Uh, but I believe we have to continue to prove regional example. However, it must first uh, answer to, to, to ensure the security in this region. As you know, security is, is most important than anything else. And the security, it was something, it was uh, really uh, it's helpful to, to this region uh, because the, the, the Peshmerga and also our people is against the, the, the terrorism all, always. So it was one of our uh, good chance to have this peace oasis. It was the security and we must ensure to keep continue secure this uh, security in, in this region. Tell me where we are on the move towards full Kurdish independence. I presume that you are in favor of a unified, independent Kurdish homeland. But tell me, frankly speaking, is that ever attainable? So uh, the independence of Kurdistan state is like any nation in the world. It's a dream of any Kurds. Uh, but it uh, depends of, of the situation, you know, the, the environment we are living in. As you know, we, we, had, uh, we had our... A referendum for independence in in 2017, and most of the people, more than 93 person, uh, they voted for yes. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not happened. And also, it was not about to, to happen uh, in in a month, for example, at that time. But uh, you know, this the situation of Kurdistan, of uh, KRI and Iraqi Kurdistan, is it's something you know. It been unacceptable before, and what uh, we went to to that is not about we are against any nation or any neighbor or any country, but because we we are suffer from the war, from from the chemical, from the sanction, uh, from unfair what's going on. You know, in this part of Kurdistan, we we just lose two hundred thousand civilian people in ten years, uh, nineteen eighty one to nineteen ninety one. And even with that, in 2003, we were semi-independent, uh, but our leaders decided to going back to, to, to new, what's I call it, a new, new Iraq uh, after uh, the dictator uh, regime removed uh, in Baghdad with, and established with a new constitution. And we were happy as a leader of the Kurds and everybody. But unfortunately, what's happened in, in, uh, in Iraq, nobody uh, follow the, the, the constitution in Iraq. And starting with sanction, even during ISIS, we fought against ISIS, we were under sanction from the, the federal government. So those, those reasons are, are push us to go to the referendum and to, the, to, to have our own state and independence. And it's, it's our right, of course, and it's legal, but uh, because of the situation being postponed. Let me ask you about security, because you are there in military uniform as a, as a general in the, in the Pashmerga. Uh, there are three major uh, non-state militant groups operating in and around Kurdistan, aren't there? Uh, ISIS, the PKK, and the Hashid. How do the Kurdish people feel about them, and what's the attitude of the uh, Kurdish regional government towards them? So, uh, really, uh, the, the three of them, they are they creating the kind of, that they make unstable uh, instability in the, the region. Uh, so if it's go one by one, for example, PKK, you know, uh, they are uh, courts, they are opposition against the, the, the Turkish government. And they leave, so they leave after 2013, the peace process, and they started again uh, to, uh, they, so this is the mentality of them, of course. They decide to go against, to, to fight against the Turkish military. But the problem here, they are inside uh, KRI in, in our region in Kurdistan, they're making an unstable uh, stable area, and they we have almost 400, uh, 400 villages. They didn't going back uh, to to the region to the border. 
because of this fight between PKK and, and Turkish military. Unfortunately, uh, they give an excuse to the uh, Turkish uh, army coming uh, um, almost every, every month they have a new uh, position inside uh, our region because this is a big excuse for them. Uh, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's not acceptable and it's not good for, for the region what the PKK are doing now because if they want to fall, so uh, of course, always we are with the peace process. This century, this time is not anymore to go and and fight by you know by weapons, but so this is not our decision, their decision. But if they want to do that, they have to do it inside Turkey. You know they have big big area there, but they are not there. They are not present there, and they are here in in our region. So it's very bad, of course. And second one about the militia, uh, but they're doing a terror attack against uh, KRG, about against the civilian people, as uh, I'm sure uh, everybody knows. You hear about what happened the rocket against the Erbil International Airport and also the, the drones uh, a few days ago. So again, uh, yeah, they they have the, the uh, bombs uh, to, with the drones. Yes, so tell me, the, tell me, uh, uh, Mr. Bazani, who, who do you think was responsible for those attacks on uh, Erbil Airport and, and, and who were the intended victims? Uh, so uh, they are mentioning. So they officially they say same same uh, uh, Shia militia. They said we we will, we would do that because uh, the coalition are there. They are in Erbil, and they are uh, they are pro American. Let's say so we will go that anywhere, even outside Iraq. So they they uh, they say it officially at the TV, and they make it this terror attack inside a city like Erbil, a capital of of KRG. And, and a civilian airport. But uh, security-wise, of course, uh, let's go to, to ISIS, the biggest threat in, in, in the whole Iraq. And now still they are there and they are more active. The ISIS starting to reorganize themselves again and they are uh, very active and they have almost every day terror attack against the civilian or civilian target or military or security services. So there is almost their uh, attack from from ISIS and let's say I'm responsible about uh, sector six uh, south and south uh, west of Erbil we have permanent ISIS on those mountains we are uh, facing uh, this problem every day and we have uh, permanent ISIS they are there even with this uh, all operations cooperating with the coalition with Iraqi uh, army also but still they are there Tell me, who does Kurdistan regard as its allies uh, internationally and regionally? Uh, really, we don't see as a, let's say, enemy. We, we have allies, but of course, uh, the most uh, important allies for us, the, the Western country, the coalition against ISIS, because they've been from the day first, they're supporting us against this terrorist group. Uh, it's right, we've been uh, at the troops on ground, be fighting against this terrorism group, but it was not easy and was not so uh, possible to defeat ISIS without the support with the coalition, especially, you know, the leading the coalition, it's the uh, United States and also the rest of, of the, the countries, European country, all this coalition. So they are, they are our ally and they are the, let's say, the... the security for the people and they, they giving uh, they, they they giving morale to the people because as you know we have still we have too many refugees here we have too many idps minorities the minorities in iraq more, more than 90 percent to 95 percent are living in kurdistan because of the security situation so this our ally is not only to defeating direct supporting us with the airstrike with the drones with the technology against ISIS and the terrorism. Also, they are very important till to put, send back this IDPs to, to, the, to the homeland. Tell me, what do you think uh, President Biden's approach should be towards countering uh, ISIS and Iranian-backed militia in the region? Uh, so uh, what, what we hear, uh, what he started and acting till now, it's, it's uh, very good, uh, but uh, President Biden and the administration, but uh, I think uh, they need more troops on ground and more forces inside Iraq to, to stop this 
uh, militia because they are meeting uh, and they are targeting the, the American army and, and American army and the coalition. The coalition and American army, they are here because invited by Iraqi government, they are not coming in to fighting our life. They are, they are here to supporting us with their money, with their technology, with those, all this uh, budget, you know. So it's something that's, that's really very bad and hurting us when we saw inside Iraq, they starting to, to hate the, the, the coalition people inside who are here to supporting us to, as I mentioned, without them, it was, impossible for Iraqi army to retake back Mosul even. So uh, this is something uh, not uh, good and not nice. Uh, I think uh, the, the administration of uh, President Biden, they have to uh, send more forces to, to, to Iraq. Okay, but uh, the Biden administration uh, is exiting foreign wars, isn't it? Forever wars, as it calls them. We, uh, we saw that in Afghanistan in a move which many experts believe will just increase the instability in the region. What do you think the knock-on effects of the exit from Afghanistan will be for Kurdistan? So I think uh, Kurdistan and Iraq at all, it's, it's different uh, because as even uh, His Excellency mentioned, they went there because they were a Qaeda there and they defeated Qaeda and they, and they killed the, the leader of Qaeda, Osama bin Laden. And they keep continue helping the, the people of Afghanistan and the government of Afghanistan for 20 years. But at the end, so they, they find they, this is what, what the people want there. But in Iraq is something different. In Kurdistan is different. You know, the, the region is more important. Uh, geopolitical, it's more important here. And economic from mid Middle East, the safety and security of Middle East is very important for the future, for the ally of United States for the whole Europe also. It's, I think it's, it's different. Uh, you cannot uh, see, it's not compare, you know, between Afghanistan and Iraq. And the stability of Iraq, it's the stability of Middle East. And of course, uh, everybody knows that all of the world, they, they're looking for the stability in Middle East for many reasons, especially economy reason. And uh, ISIS is not defeated like Al Qaeda there. ISIS are there still. And without support of the coalition, they became more stronger and stronger. Tell me, uh, how are your relations with Saudi Arabia? Uh, so uh, there is a good relation with Saudi Arabia, uh, for sure. And uh, they, uh, through the NGOs, supporting the many of our IDPs and refugees here. And there is historical uh, relation with Saudi Arabia, and still we have very good relation with them. Good. Uh, going back to Iran for a moment, do you think that the negotiations going on about the JCPOA, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, should these take into account the renewed threat uh, that Iranian-backed militias pose? Uh, from my perspective, in my view, I think one of, of the pressure here against the coalition and especially the American forces inside Iraq, it's uh, depend of this negotiation it's going on with the nuclear in, uh, in Vienna because the Iranian and Iva uh, Iranian regime are suffering from uh, uh, all the sanction what uh, signed by President Trump in that time. And they are really suffering for that. And they, they're looking forward to, to push this uh, negotiation as soon as possible to just uh, release some, some money and to reduce the, the sanction. So I think uh, also the pressure here uh, against the, the coalition is one of the part it's, it's that, it's just in my view. What should Western governments do uh, to support their allies like Kurdistan on the front line against ISIS and other Iranian-backed militias? Uh, really, the, I think they have to keep continue uh, as they did for us and they are doing till now and they are with us in, uh, uh, as advising and especially with the, with the drone. But the, more, the most important, uh, they have to, to just uh, give us, as a Peshmerga, some new technology. Uh, for example, we till today, we don't have any drones, for example. And even for you know, many, if you go to the technology, you know, the, the, the night vision, or thermal cameras, or uh, defensive weapons, still we don't have them because we are part of Iraq, of course. And all the end users should come from Baghdad. And unfortunately, they, they don't uh, do that for us. And not only that, even 
the budget of Peshmerga by the constitution of Iraq, we are part of the security system of Iraq, but since 15 years, we, we, didn't, we didn't saw uh, any budget from Baghdad direct to, to, the, to the Peshmerga. Tell me, what did Kurdistan think of the Abraham Accords that normalized uh, relations between Israel and some Arab countries last year? Uh, really, you know, the, 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 the relation and the peace process, it's, it's the priority for, for the Kurds, uh, for everywhere. And we think uh, this is the only solution for the region. Uh, never ever they will solve the, the problem if they starting to killing each other and uh, starting to attacking, you know, terror attack or bombing. So this is never will end. And we saw that as, as a Kurd, you know, what happened against us, what we are still there, what we don't, don't give up. But at the end, you have to go to the to the peace process. You have to go to know uh, to this good relation to to together with this old region for this nation for our uh, future for our people. You know, this is the only solution, and this is the the, the best step. I think those countries started with Israel. Mr. Bazani, you are a businessman uh, as well as a military man, aren't you? Uh, and there are big things going on uh, in Saudi Arabia in terms of economic transformation and the move to diversify the economy away from oil dependency. Are you watching this? What's, what's your view? Uh, I think uh, what uh, uh, MBS started with, with this culture reform, with the economy reform, and also the vision in 2030, I think it's, it's a very great state. And uh, uh, I think it was supposed to should happen even before, you know. So there is a, of course, uh, the, the holy city, we all respect it. Let's say we have Mecca and Medina and al Kaaba in Saudi Arabia, but it not means you don't uh, invest in a right way to your country and do the happiness for your people and, uh, you know, promoting your country and make more uh, jobs for your people. So what they starting, I think it's something very important. And, um, we hope uh, they will succeed for this vision 2030. It's a great move. Uh, oil is the lifeblood of the Kurdish economy uh, and prices are coming back of crude oil to almost to pre-pandemic levels. Uh, what's your view on the global oil economy and how are your relations with Baghdad in respect of your industry there? Uh, you know the 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 oil at at the end, so it's as a as a risky uh, things to to depend on on the oil only, uh, because uh, it's nobody, no country can depend only in one on one uh, uh, resources or or one revenue side. So uh, especially in Kurdistan now, even the KRG is starting, you know, with the new reform and also to not depend on oil uh, to. Uh, uh, diversify the economy it's the most important for it for Kurdistan uh, of course you know we we have too too many things especially uh, let's say tourism uh, side is very important we have very nice uh, region we have uh, uh, geographic wise weather wise and, and that's more important thing you know the security for all the uh, economy and businesses and we have uh, thanks to the Peshmerga and our people we have very good uh, security in the, this uh, region. So in the future, uh, we have to depend on many resources and many businesses, including, always I mentioned, the, the most important, I think, the, the tourism sector, because as we see the, the, the new technology, uh, what we saw in the pandemic, with the online, with everything, but the only business, I think, even in future, uh, nobody can do it in online. They have to visit by themselves the tourism. It's a very uh, important uh, uh, sector for, for Kurdistan. And of course, agriculture, uh, you know, organic agriculture in this region, it's very important. And it's not only for uh, Kurdistan, even in Iraq, they have to change its mentality to only depend of, on oil because at the end, even without pandemic, uh, you know, everybody's going now with the, with the new uh, technology, you know, the with the solar system, with the, all this uh, changing, you know, the, the, the technology. So in the future, anyway, even the prices would be in a reasonable price or good price, but still the people and the world will not need uh, any more like now uh, oil. You know a lot about the communications business, don't you? Because you run the, uh, the telecoms company, Corec. Tell me about the challenges of running 
an operation like that in a volatile region like Kurdistan? Uh, really, of course. Uh, so I established uh, uh, the Korak Telecom. It was uh, almost uh, year 2000 when I started. Uh, of course, after a few years, I just uh, became a chairman of the company. So I'm the founder of this company. And uh, thanks to our people, thanks to God, became a biggest company in, in KRG. And then after that, of course, we are national uh, wide. We get national wide license 2007 from whole Iraq. And uh, we are working everywhere. But uh, unfortunately, it's not easy business, uh, especially in such a country like uh, Iraq, because uh, we we saw too many problems, you know, security issue. For example, when ISIS came, the whole Sunni area, for example, they just uh, shut down the network, destroyed all the towers, taking our generators. So the security issue is very, very uh, important for us. And we, we're facing difficulty with that because uh, such a country is not easy to secure all this tower because you have to have these BTSs and towers everywhere in the country. So security wise, and also there is uh, too many things, you know, like electricity, there is no reliable electricity in, in this country, there is no reliable uh, fiber optic, for example, infrastructure in this country. But uh, the most difficulty we're facing is uh, security. Finally, Mr. Bazani, uh, you are a representative of one of the most prominent families in Kurdistan. Uh, but let me ask you personally, whether you have wider political ambitions? Uh, no, really. Uh, so if uh, I can just uh, finish my job now with what I'm doing against ISIS and the terrorism, I want to go back to, to have more time and give full time to, to my business to do a new project for my country. This is only what I want. Mr. Barzani, the best of luck with that. And many thanks indeed. It's been a fascinating conversation. Thank you for your insights and for appearing on Frankly Speaking. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Pleasure.